This video describes the construction of capability control charts. They're new in Stack Graphics 18. Capability control charts are a special type of statistical process control chart. They're used to monitor process capability for either variables through CP, CPK, PP, or PPK, or attributes through theta, the proportion of nonconforming items, or lambda, the rate of nonconformities. They are an example of phase two or control to standard charts with the center line and the control limits based on established standards for the process. As an example, you see here a set of values for CPK. They've been measured once a day from a manufacturing process. To create a control chart for CPK in Stack Graphics 18, you go to the main menu and select SPC, Control Charts, Capability Control Charts, Variables. You'll then see this Data Input dialog box. In the field labeled Capability Index, put the name of the column containing the indices to be plotted. In the field labeled Sample Size or Sizes, put a single number if all the indices are based upon the same size sample. Otherwise, put the name of a column containing the sizes associated with each value of the index. If the capability indices are based upon subgroup data, put a number in the field labeled number of subgroups in sample to indicate how many subgroups there are associated with each value of the capability index. This can also be the name of a column if the number of subgroups differs from one date to the next. If the capability indices are based upon individuals data, you can leave that field blank. In the field labeled date, time, and labels, put the name of a column containing indications of when each value of the capability index was collected. The Analysis Options dialog box will then be displayed. You can choose between the indices CP, PP, CPK, or PPK. In the field labeled Target Index, put the value of the target for whatever index you're plotting. This value defines the center line of the control chart. If the capability indices to be plotted are based upon subgroup data, indicate how the standard deviation sigma has been estimated. You can choose between average range, average standard deviation, or pooled standard deviation. In the field labeled limits, Select the control limits that you wish to plot. The most common selections are upper and lower or lower only. Finally, specify the false alarm rates associated with the upper and lower control limits. The false alarm rate is the chance of getting an index beyond the control limits if in fact the process is operating at the target value of the index. The default is 0.135% for each control limit, which corresponds to a three sigma control chart. I've loaded the data for CPK into the Stack Graphics 18 data sheet. To create the control chart, I'll go to SPC, Control Charts, Capability Control Charts, Variables. The column containing the capability indices is CPK. The sample size associated with each index is 40. 40 observations have been sampled to create each value of CPK. They've been divided into eight subgroups of five observations each. The column date indicates the day on which each index was collected. When I press OK, the Analysis Options dialog box will appear. I'll indicate to the program 
that I'm giving it values of CPK, which is a short-term capability index. The target value for the index is 2.0. Each index is based upon a standard deviation that was estimated using the average subgroup range. I'm going to ask for only a lower control limit and leave the default false alarm rate at 0.135%. When I press OK, I'll see a list of tables and graphs. I'll begin by looking simply at the analysis summary and the capability chart. When I press OK, an analysis window will open up. Here is the control chart for CPK. On the control chart, Notice that the center line is located at 2.0. There's a single control limit at 1.4747. In this case, none of the points are below the lower control limit, so the process would be declared to be in a state of statistical control. If I click on the control chart with my right mouse button, I can select pane options. This gives me a number of different options that I could add to my chart. If I wanted, I could plot inner and outer warning limits. These are limits two-thirds and one-third of the way between the center line and the control limits. I could mark unusual runs rules violations the same way I would do on any Schuhart chart. I could also elect to plot colored zones and also specify the number of decimal places for the limits. In this case, I'll select colored zones and press OK. Notice that the region beyond the control limit is shaded red. The region between the control limit and two-thirds of the distance from the center line to the control limit is shown in yellow. Points in the yellow region would generate a warning because they're getting very close to the control limit. The zone between one-third and two-thirds of the distance from the center line to the control limit is shown in light green and the rest of the region is dark green. It's also useful to plot the operating characteristic or OC curve associated with the capability control chart. The operating characteristic curve shows the probability that an estimated index CPK hat will be within the control limits as a function of the true value of CPK. If the true process CPK is 2, then the chance of getting an estimate within the control limits is very close to 1. If the true index falls to 1, there's almost no chance of getting an estimate within the control limits. On the other hand, if the true CPK is 1.5, then the estimated value of the index will be within the control limits about 56% of the time. Returning to Stack Graphics 18, I can go to the list of tables and graphs and select OC curve to generate the operating characteristic curve. I'll double click on it so you can get a better view. To read values of the curve, I can press the right mouse button and select locate. That brings up a set of crosshair cursors that I can move to a position on the curve in order to read the values. I can also use my cursor keys to position it more finely. And here's the estimate I showed you, about a 56% chance of an estimated CPK being within the control limits if the true CPK is 1.5. I can also generate one more interesting curve by going to the Tables and Graphs dialog box 
and selecting ARL curve. ARL stands for average run length. This shows me as a function of the true CPK how many points I'll have to plot on average before getting an out of control signal if the true CPK all of a sudden falls from 2 to some other value. Again, I can press the right mouse button, go to locate, and set the crosshair cursors to any particular value along the x-axis. I've set it now to 1.5, and you can see that on average, it will be two time periods until I get an out of control signal if the true CPK all of a sudden falls from 2 to 1.5. If you'd like to learn more about capability control charts, including their use with attribute data, take a look at Chapter 9 of my book on Process Capability Analysis, Estimating Quality. It's published by CRC Press.